Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Can you believe that it is our final yellow chair devotional looking at the names of God? Man, our month is over already. Before you know it, it's going to be February. And for the month of February, we're going to be connecting with different pastors and different ministerial leaders. They're going to be sharing some awesome insight into what we would call the fundamental beliefs. Like, what do we believe? about God? What do we believe about church? What do we believe about the Bible? So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the other input and different perspectives that we're going to be able to learn together. Now for today's name of God, it's a cool one. It comes from the book of Revelation. We're ending in the very last book of the Bible. It is Alpha and Omega. So here is the Greek letter Alpha, which looks like our letter A, right? Here is the Greek letter Omega. So it kind of looks like an O. It's just kind of like a, a horseshoe, isn't it? Kind of a fancy horseshoe. So Alpha and Omega are the last and the first letter in the Greek alphabet. And even when we, t when we talk about the alpha bet, well, alpha, that comes from the Greek. Bet is the second letter of the alpha bet called bet. All right, so like the Greek alphabet is really cool, but the first letter is alpha, the last is omega. What's the first letter in our alphabet? A. What's the last letter? Z. So, we would almost, if we were to translate this like to how we talk about our alphabet, the name for God would be A and Z. What does that mean? A and Z. Well, let's turn to Revelation chapter 1 and see what God says about this name for himself. Okay, so Revelation is the last book of the Bible. We've been at the, in it the last few days as we look at these, these beautiful pictures as we've imagined what it's going to be like someday when we get to spend eternity with the Alpha and Omega. So Revelation chapter 1, at the very beginning here, we're going to read verse 4 through 8. Okay, so again, the disciple John, he is exiled on the island of Patmos because of his amazing love and the ministry that he's doing, spreading the good news about Jesus. And he has these visions and he writes this book, letting people know about what's to come, these amazing pictures of heaven and these insights into just the fact that God, oh, he's got a plan and we know that Jesus wins. So let's read here verses four through eight. It says, from John to the seven churches in the country of Asia, grace and peace to you from the one who is and was and is coming and from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ. Jesus is the faithful witness. He is first among those raised from the dead. He is the ruler of the kings of the earth and he is the one who loves us. And he is the one who made us free from our sins with the blood of his death. He made us to be a kingdom of priests who serve God, his father. To Jesus Christ be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, Jesus is coming with the clouds. Everyone will see him even those who stabbed him. And all peoples of the earth will cry loudly because of him. Yes, this will happen. Amen. The Lord God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the one who is and was and is coming. I am the All-Powerful. When God says that he is the Alpha and the Omega, it's all he's saying, I'm the beginning and I'm the end, and I'm everything in between. From Genesis to Revelation, all of it is God's deep love for you and me, his desire to have a personal relationship with us, and how he sets about doing everything he can to save us from the enemy. And how does it end? Jesus wins. We know from the beginning to the end, God is there. He has no birthday. 
he has always been, which doesn't work with our brains. How does that work? How can we imagine that? But God is saying, I am everything. I've always been here. I always will be here. And I am here for you. And look at this, this amazing verse where it talks about Jesus and it says, he is the one who loves us. He is the one who made us free from our sins with the blood of his death. He has made us to be a part of his kingdom. Oh my goodness, isn't this not the most exciting thing ever? Now, let's go to the last chapter of Revelation. Revelation 22. So we, just a couple days ago, we read the first few verses here. But we didn't read all of it because I was saving it for now. Okay, so Revelation chapter 22. This is the very end of the Bible. The very end. All right, Revelation 22, verse 12. Verse 12. All right, so... Here we go. It says, listen, I am coming soon. I will bring rewards with me. I will repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. God is the creator and maker. He is everything. Think of all the names of God that we have studied all month long, all of the characteristics, all of the qualities of God. Is there anything that God is not for us? He is everything we could ever imagine, dream, want, or desire. And what does he want from us? to choose to enter into that relationship with us. He never forces it. He never tries to control us. He says, please, please, I love you so much. I want you to spend forever with me. Will you please be a part of my kingdom? Just say yes. Let's read the last verses of Revelation. Revelation 22, now look at verse 20. This is how the whole Bible ends. Jesus is the one who says that these things are true. Now he says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. I am coming soon. You know, people have been waiting and waiting and hoping and hoping for Jesus to come soon. They've been, they've been hoping ever since John wrote these words thousands of years ago. But here's the thing. Jesus wants every heart, right? God wants everyone to have that opportunity to say yes. And so if that means that God waits a little bit longer because it means it gives more people the opportunity to say yes, then I'm willing to wait. How about you? I'm willing to wait another year, a couple more days, however long it takes so that everyone gets that chance to say yes. Because our God loves everyone so much, he wants everyone to have that chance to say yes. And so Jesus is coming soon and I can't wait for that. But in the meantime, in the meantime, I know that we serve a God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He has been here for forever. I'll trust that God's got the end figured out too, right? So let's say a prayer together. And then I'll show you our final pieces of matching cards. And then I'll show you what I've got set up on my floor. All right, so let's say a prayer. Dear God, we are so thankful you are the Alpha and the Omega. You have always been. You always will be. Your beginning and the end, you are the A to Z. And we're so thankful that even though you are all of those things, you also are personal and you want to be our friend and you want us to have the opportunity to say yes to you. So we look forward to when Jesus is coming again. We are looking forward to that day when we get to spend eternity in the new Jerusalem with you. But we also are just going to stay in our relationship with you. We're going to trust you as the Alpha and Omega to know that you have the whole thing in your hands and we trust your perfect timing. We thank you so much for your love in your name. Amen. All right, the final cards. So 
On this one, I've got alpha and omega, and then I also made the Greek letters, okay? So if you wanted to add those, you could. But I said that these are the first and the last letters in the Greek alphabet. Jesus was there at the beginning, he'll be there at the end, the creator and maker of all things, and we look forward to him coming again. And I've got this included in the video description. Then I've got my English, beginning and end. And then I picked a Bible verse. You can pick whichever one you want. I did the one from Revelation 1.8 where God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega who was and is and is to come, the Almighty. Okay, so there's our cards. Then we know we have a match because we've got the same thing on the back, all right? So whether it's a colored paper, whether it's a design, whatever you want, okay? So now I'm gonna try and not drop the camera and I'm gonna bring you down to my floor and we're gonna look at all of our matching game cards here. Okay, so we had our first set that were kind of fancy and these ones that we've been making together. But look at all of our matching cards for our game here. And I'm looking at these going, okay, let's see. The Lord is peace. So, shalom. Oh, which one meant that? Which one meant the Lord is peace? Oh, Jehovah, shalom. So let's see, let's see. Oh, it's a match. It's a match. What about here? Jehovah Jireh, God himself will provide the lamb. What does Jehovah Jireh mean? It means that the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. So let's see. Here we go. And we've got another match. All of these promises, all of these amazing things that we know about God because of his name. I hope that you have enjoyed making these matching cards with me and learning more about the names of God. And I will see you when we start our new series next month, learning more about what do we believe? Why do we believe that? Have a great rest of your day. You can send me pictures of your matching card too. I would love to see what you've created. You can send them. My contact info is in the video link below. Have a great rest of your day.